from WBAY-TV, your first alert station. Action 2 News starts right now with breaking news. Today, I have declared a public health emergency to address the outbreak of COVID-19 in the state of Wisconsin. We begin with breaking news as the situation surrounding the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic continues to develop today. Good afternoon. You just heard Governor Tony Evers declaring a public health emergency. Now the Department of Health Services reports two new cases in Dane County, bringing the number of active cases in the state to seven. An eighth person has already recovered. The governor's declaration directs the Department of Health Services to use all resources necessary to respond to and contain the outbreak. Governor Evers says 37 people are returning to Wisconsin after spending time aboard a Princess cruise ship. They may have been exposed and need to be monitored in self-quarantine for 14 days. Green Bay Area Public Schools are taking major precautions. The Green Bay Area Public School District has canceled all events, over 250 people starting tomorrow. Notre Dame Academy, meanwhile, announcing, is announcing all in-person classes and extracurriculars are suspended until March 27th. At the end of spring break next week, the school will utilize its online learning platform. Earlier today, UW Oshkosh followed the lead of other UW schools yesterday, canceling in-person classes for the week of March 16th. That applies to the Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, and Fox Cities campuses. The university will begin off-campus learning on Monday, March 30th. Artia Johnson is joining us now live. She's continuing our health alert coverage to explain the safety measures being enforced tonight. Tia. Cammy, okay, this sign shows you just how strict they are being with attendance at the state tournament this weekend. You know, this is an arena that can hold thousands of people, but the WIAA is limiting attendance to only 88 tickets per team. The sports teams and a lot of the things that go into them kind of make up the community. So not having their support is not something that we're used to. It's really disappointing for our first time making it down to state as this group, not having our fans there. But our community is so strong and they follow us wherever we go so we know that back at home they're going to be cheering for us as loud as they would be cheering for us here in Green Bay. But we begin first with a new directive from Governor Tony Evers. Just minutes ago he ordered all schools public and private in the state to close this coming Wednesday due to the coronavirus outbreak. Dakota Sherrick joins us from the Fox Valley Newsroom with more on this decision and how some school districts were already preparing for long term closures. Dakota. Jeff, as you said, this closure will be starting on Wednesday, and it was said in a release from the governor's office that it was chosen on Wednesday just to give school districts a little time to plan and prepare for this closure. Governor Evers posting to Twitter right after the announcement was made, saying in part, quote, closing our schools is not a decision I made lightly. We were there waiting for that decision, and it came at about 11 o'clock last night. Unfortunately for Wrightstown, the girls and boys basketball programs were on their way to make history. The girls defeated Lake Mills to play in the championship game. If it had been played and the Tigers did go on to win, it would have been the first title for girls basketball. Meanwhile, the boys were on their way to make history with their first day appearance in program history. However, the, with the cancellation, the teams are not focusing on what could have been instead of choosing to focus on what was. The girls team today meeting up with Platteville at the uh, rest center and taking a picture. All right, that that's them. Um, that is totally them. Um, their passion, their love for each other and, and their smiles. The, uh, the boys team last night, uh, uh, coach called me up at about uh, uh, five to ten. Uh, he goes, Coach C. We got to go over to the uh, got to go to the gym. Is it okay if we go to the gym? I said, Why is that? He goes, Well, the the team is there and they want to get in. They want to hear the news together. Multiple rights town coaches I talked to at 3:30 this afternoon told me they were baffled. If sporting events are canceled, why isn't school? It wasn't an hour later the governor mandated the closure for all Wisconsin schools. What actually really concerns us about the cold weather is human nature. Remember, this virus needs humans to live, and it's transmitted from human to human. Uh, and in the wintertime, what do we do in Wisconsin? We go inside more than we do in the summertime. So we're actually more worried about the virus actually spreading more as we get colder, and we're seeing some evidence of that right now than actually becoming less virulent. All right, so a coworker, another question. Coworker tested positive for COVID, came back to work after 10 days at home. They mask intermittently now back in the workplace. They take it off to eat, drink, talk on the phone for a few minutes at a time. 
and this person saying, our desks are just about six feet apart. Uh, do I need to still continue to worry about this, uh, or am I just overthinking that, that I could get this transmitted to me? Well, we should always be maintaining that, that those safe practices of washing your hands, wearing your mask, and staying six feet away. But the risks definitely go down if somebody has recovered from COVID-19. And recovery is 10 days if they're not severely immunocompromised. So the standard person, 10 days after the onset of symptoms with the last 24 hours them being essentially symptom free, they're done. Uh, there's no testing um, after that point. Actually tests can continue to be positive, but them actually been able to, being able to transmit the virus to anybody, you're done after 10 days. So that's a safer environment, but you should still maintain your, your good habits. Health officials confirm they first learned about a cluster of COVID-19 cases at JBS last Tuesday. We're told CDC officials arrived in Green Bay this morning to assist with contact tracing at the meat packaging facility, which is expected to start doing employee testing this week. American Food Group and even like some partners, they are actually uh, going forward with the uh, same type of of process where the, they're doing employee testing and um, and really trying to be proactive in terms of limiting the spread and uh, and maintaining the or preserving the supply chain. But with higher numbers at plants here in Brown County, we asked the governor whether the state would step in. Well, the uh, can you help me with that? I, I just don't know if that I don't know the answer to that. One. Yeah, uh, so we have been uh, working closely uh, uh, with the hospitals and with the local public health um, and, and uh, in, in, in contact with those employers as well. I think we, uh, we are trying to balance uh, all of these factors as we uh, understand uh, the, the prevalence and the outbreak there. Um, I, I do think, uh, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to there's some talk about whether there is um, supply chain. There are supply chain issues um, there that would uh, uh, result in um, there not being actual work to be done, uh, at least at one of the facilities. But I, I don't know, Ryan, if you have more details on that. I, I think it's a evolving situation. We have to, you know, work in close partnership with the facilities, the local public health, to to do to do the right thing. I think we're still working on working on exactly the best strategy. It is a question that many of you have asked us, and the state did not have a clear answer. The state sent test kits when the number of COVID-19 cases spiked in Brown County earlier this week, but it would not commit to any clear path forward regarding the operation of businesses identified in recent clusters. Brown County health officials also told us today closing any plant in the county is not on the table and that it would support a voluntary shutdown if a company did so. It says plants have translators and messages in different languages posted, plus have been told that social distancing guidelines and plexiglass are installed. Whether they're closed or not, I cannot answer that question, but I can answer this one is that, or offer this, this solution is that if this outbreak is a result of um, not enough physical distance between workers. That's a problem. It has to be fixed. Action 2 News receiving a statement from JBS late this afternoon saying health and safety is its number one priority. A spokesperson also said production capacity at the Green Bay plant has been reduced. Responders will show up. <laughs> but may look a little different too as they follow a new set of guidelines. All of our responders will have the appropriate level of personal protective equipment in place. A minimum amount of responders will come from a vehicle even if several members may be present. This is in an attempt to prevent any additional crew members from being exposed unnecessarily. Fair fire rescue. Can you come to the door for me, sir? Now we're trying to instruct all the patients to please exit the home and make contact with your responders. You call for an ambulance? If they can't exit the home themselves, ask a family member or somebody in the home to go outside and make contact with the responders. Hey, why don't you come out on here, pal? Once they've established the possibility of an infection, I'm putting this on for me right yeah. over your nose and mouth. The patient may be asked to wear a mask, which again helps protect our responders. Have you a cough into your, into your arm there if you can. All right, bud. After a Another short wait, a second healthcare professional looked over that paper before signaling me ahead for testing. Shut up the car and have you blow your nose. A member of the National Guard handed me a Kleenex before coming back to perform the test. 
Uh, tell your head back and uh, look uh, towards my way just a bit. You can see me back my head up and flinch as he sticks the Q-tip deep into my left nostril, swirling it around four times. All right, and now for the other side. After a few seconds of discomfort and some tears, I was finished. My sample placed in a bag ready to ship to a lab. Well, this school year has been anything but normal. Some kids going back and forth between virtual and in-person learning. Well, we've checked in on teachers. But now we wanted to see how students are doing, navigating life through and school during this ongoing pandemic. Tonight, Aisha Morales brings us her special report, Learning to Adapt. We've heard kids are resilient. However, during a year that's anything but normal, even kids are trying to roll with constant changes around them. Tell me what you think about this pandemic. Um, I'm kind of sad. Oh no, why are you sad? Because we can't get together and since we have to stay six feet apart and wear masks. Instead of being excited and cherishing my senior year, I'm more just looking for the 199 days that I get to graduate so I can go to college. Like that, instead of cherishing my senior year, I just want it to end. Hallways are quiet, classrooms are empty. So are you virtual right now too? Yes. Some of the kids are embracing virtual learning. But I would rather go in person, but I know it's to say, stay safe all the time and that's how it can help us stay safe. Do you miss being in person or? Um, I kind of miss being in person, but I like being able to stay at home all day. <laughs> Others miss being social, seeing their friends, teachers, and learning in person. Well, what's harder for me because I have vision problems. I don't really like virtual learning because I'm more of a hands-on learner because um, I can't really pay attention because it's really hard. What do you miss the most about actually going to school? Uh, like seeing my real friends. The emotions range and for some of the kids, it can depend on the day. I just have to say that it can be hard for some people with like no brother and sister with virtual learning. I have a sister, but she's only zero. But we talked about staying positive, looking for ways to press on together. Simon said, touch your nose. How can we stay positive? How do you stay positive? I stay positive by thinking of nice things, hoping, just, just keeping faith, just hoping that this will end and hoping the dust will settle soon. Aisha Morales, Action 2 News. One of the biggest factors in who gets what lies in the COVID cold chain who has the ability to store the vaccines that require almost unheard of temperatures. The Pfizer vaccine needs ultra cold storage around negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Bellin's director of pharmacy, Laura Allar, tells us there are a lot of questions about storing vaccines shipped in what she describes as the size of pizza boxes. That box is supposed to hold 975 doses. It depends on what the storage considerations are. We'll turn now to our vaccine expert who has joined us numerous times here recently on the show, Brittany Schmidt. She was taking part in that briefing today. So what did we learn that was new today? When can we possibly expect it to arrive and start being given in Northeast Wisconsin? Right, so we know that planes went out yesterday. We yep. received it this morning. So we have eight hubs here in Wisconsin. They didn't tell us where those hubs are for security reasons, but we do know that UW Health is one of them. So they gave it to two hubs today. Um, six more hubs will get the vaccine tomorrow and Wednesday. So we're expecting it here and you can see right there. That's the first person getting a vaccine here in Wisconsin, a historic photo right there from UW Health. Um, we're expecting to see it here in Northeast Wisconsin within the next 48 hours. DHS secretary designee Andrea Palm made it very clear healthcare workers would get the shot first, then long term health care facilities. Who's next then after that? What we understand is that essential workers are next. Will the essential workers, will it be based down to job title or how will that work? I know that, you know, we've been getting some questions that our teachers on the list, our grocery store workers on the list. I honestly don't know whether they will go all the way to job title or whether they will do things like um, an essential worker who has significant um, contact with the public. Um, um, are essential workers who um, are in jobs uh, with folks who can't be vaccinated. 
So kids, right? That would that would catch your teachers.